Charcoal is actually processed wood, so this has been burnt and it is now fuel for a fire. It's incredibly brittle. There's no way I'd be able to turn this on the wood lathe. So what somebody suggested to me in the last video was to take this material and stabilize it in our vacuum chamber. pretty good actually. So now what we need to do is we need to completely submerge that in resin. And my belief is that the charcoal should float. There it goes. I made this weight a while back. So now none of the charcoal is coming out of the resin. And all I'm going to do is turn it on. As I let off on this bleed valve over here, you'll see We'll start to draw a vacuum, and while that's happening, we're going to be pulling the air out of the charcoal. What we want to do is pull every bit of air out of the charcoal that we can. It takes four, five, maybe even six hours of full vacuum to pull all the air out. All right, and it's been running non-stop for a little under seven hours. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release the vacuum. What the purpose of that was was to pump all the air that we could out of the charcoal, just so that when we turned the vacuum back on, it would suck the resin into all of the little air pockets. And now we're just going to let it sit in here overnight and continue to soak up as much resin as it possibly can. Let's see how we did. Yeah, so they're still floating. I kind of wondered, I wasn't sure. It's a really light material. The resin it has permeated the structure of these and it should not just leak out. All we're doing here is getting off the excess on the outside. Yeah, can you even see that? It's amazing. The resin is now in the material and in order to cure it, it needs to sit in an oven at 200 degrees for 45 minutes. That will cure the resin and turn it hard. Uh, hey Siri, set timer, 45 minutes. Okay, 45 minutes and counting. Here they are, all of my little loaves out of the toaster oven. Let's go ahead and just open up one of these. See what we got. It definitely feels more dense, so it, it has absorbed the resin, and you can see some of the resin here. It looks almost bluish. Okay, so I can't turn this by itself. It's just, it still feels way too light and too soft. But if I embed it in more resin, in casting resin, maybe that would work. Okay, I think I've got everything we need for our puzzle piece here. Uh, I've got my charcoal that's been stabilized. Got some resin. Today we're going to be using EasyCast and this bowl that I picked up from the dollar store. Uh, oh, let's give it a hit with mold release. So, let's begin assembling the bowl. And this is a large container. This holds 80 ounces, but we're not going to use that much because we're going to fill this up with charcoal and this plug in the middle. But we're not there yet. This might be the fav my favorite piece that came out, um, and I went ahead and split it on the bandsaw, and it actually cuts really well. And some more of these spires up on the sides, this is going to work. And I don't know how much of this is going to survive, you know. Um, when you turn a bowl, you make, you make it your own shape, and I want to be able to do that. Let's put this to the side for a minute and mix up some resin. Resin that I'm using today is called EasyCast. Uh, you've seen me use this before. We're gonna mix up about 10 ounces of it, five ounces of resin and five ounces of hardener. This is not going to cover a huge volume. What this is going to do is it's gonna stick down the first layer, sort of cement everything in place, and then we continue to add layers after that. And this just goes right into the pressure pot. Yeah. 
being careful not to move anything so as not to slosh around our resin and pressurize the pot up to 50 psi So the pressure pot is not a requirement, it is just a benefit. You can totally do this without a pressure pot, I've been doing it without one for years. But that being said, this resin usually takes 12 to 24 hours to soft cure and then three days to fully hard cure. And we are at the soft cure phase within four hours. And you can see we've got a long way to go. So I'm going to mix up a little bit more resin this time. So instead of 10 ounces, I think I'm going to jump up to 16 ounces. If you warm up the resin in a hot water bath, it's so much easier to work with. It flows better, it mixes better, just better. We're going to do it in stages. This is just the second stage. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the pressure pot. I was a little worried that this wasn't going to work because 16 ounces is a lot more than the manufacturer recommends pouring it once in this resin. But it seems to be doing just fine and it's, it's just crystal clear. If 16 still. ounces works. I'm going to mix up another 16 ounces and add another layer on top. All right, so that is 42 ounces of resin. I took the mold out of the pressure pot. I'm mixing up another 16 ounces of easy cast resin, and I'm going to pour that on top. That will bring us to a grand total of, oh, Crap, I've forgotten how much resin we've poured. More than we started with. And why I have to figure out how to squeeze four days worth of footage into six minutes, you get to see the unmolding. Whoa, that is heavy. Here's like a good casting. You could definitely see some of that interesting blue that we got. Still don't know why we have the blue. Something to do with the stabilizing resin. Guess it's time to head over to the lathe. Needs to be sort of trued up and then we'll start turning a foot and get it into a shape that we actually like. Okay, pieces are just falling off my lathe. It's no big deal. my face shield looks like at the moment. It is a little difficult to see. <laughs> All right, so that's my recess and I'll use that to hold this in the other direction. Mounted back on the lathe and it's just, it's really delicate. The, the resin will hold just fine but the charcoal is super delicate. I mean, even stabilized. I'm gonna turn with the tailstock up for a little while. It'll give me some extra stability here and sort of give me an idea as to whether or not that recess that I made is gonna hold.
I hit a pocket of charcoal, it softens and it's easier to push in, <laughs> but it also blackens the piece completely. And I feel like I'm looking into a black hole. I've actually got three giant um, photography lights shining on this. And when I hit a piece of charcoal and turn it to dust, it just completely obstructs my view. It looks to me like it's just being held on by charcoal. So I'm just going to give it a quick, light tap. Okay, and it's completely unseated itself in the jaws. Well done, Mr. Brown. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to spend the next, oh, 25 minutes trying to get this on the jaws and re-center. That is a bowl shape which qualifies it as done. Boy, it needs a lot of sanding. <laughs> the bench is an absolute disaster. It is covered in shavings. The grits are as follows. 180, 240, 320, 400, 600, 800. After you get to 800 grit, you're actually left with a pretty nice surface, but it's cloudy. And in order to fix that, what I use are these polishing pads called MicroMesh. All you have to do is just work through the grit one at a time and polish this up. This just shines it up so nice. This came out amazing. I got a beautiful mirror shine and the charcoal is just so interesting in there. The structure of the charcoal is still visible and you can still see the grain of the wood and you get those interesting blue highlights every now and then. If you look close, you can even see the different layers of pores that we did. It is an interesting bowl. So you know how it had all these weird blue pigments in it? Yes. So I'm pretty sure that those are actually from the stabilizing resin. And there's swirls of the different resins throughout okay. where the stabilizing resin swirled with the casting resin. Nice. Here's something I found out. Whoa. Stabilizing resin glows under a black light. So you can see how deep into the material it penetrates. That's amazing. Doesn't that look awesome. amazing? Wow. And so you can see how far in, not wow. only did it go into the charcoal, but then it swirls in the, other resin. in the other resin, because I guess it wasn't completely dry when I cast it. Wow. It's a totally different bowl wow. under blacklight. It looks completely different. That is a beautiful bowl. Isn't that cool? I love the way this looks. We've made a lot of resin bowls on this channel. The secret wood bowl, cotton ball bowl, two lava bowls. I sent the murder bowl blank to Carl Jacobson, the cereal bowl last year, and now the charcoal bowl. It's, it's just so interesting and I've never seen anyone work with charcoal before. It's a mess to turn for the record and that is gonna take a lot of cleanup, but it was worth it for this. And the easy cast resin performed amazing. I was able to quickly build up layers with deep pores. I did a total of four pores. The last two were 16 ounces each, which is way more than the manufacturer recommends, but it worked beautifully. And the resin came out so clear, and the only swirling that we got was one with an amazing byproduct, which was the swirling between the casting resin and the stabilizing resin, which gave us that amazing fluorescent under black light. All in all, I'm super happy with this. I don't know how I couldn't be. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.